Welcome to another video on the anti-derivative and indefinite integration. The main purpose of this second video is to provide additional examples involving trigonometric functions. You so I would recommend that you watch the previous video first because it will explain the concept of anti-differentiation in much more detail. But let's go ahead and do a quick review. Let's say we knew that the derivative function was equal to cosine x, but we wanted to know what the original function would have been. I'm sure with some thought you could figure out that the original function must have been f of x equals sine x. But actually there's an infinite number of functions that have a derivative of cosine x. We could add any constant on here, for example, we could have f of x equals sine x plus one, or plus two, or any constant. So what we could do is say f of x equals sine x plus c, where c would be any constant. And we call this function the antiderivative of f of x equals cosine x. So the reverse of differentiating is anti-differentiating, and the result is called the antiderivative. A function big F of x is the antiderivative of little f of x if the derivative of big F of x is equal to little f of x. So in the previous problem, we would have had f of x equals cosine x, and big F of x is equal to sine x plus c because the derivative of big F of x is equal to small f of x. And we already said to represent the entire family of antiderivatives, we can add a constant, which we represent by plus c. So to formalize this, the process of anti-differentiation is called integration or indefinite integration. To indicate the antiderivative of f of x equals cosine x is equal to a big F of x equals sine x plus c, we write the antiderivative or indefinite integral of cosine x with respect to x equals sine x plus c. This is called the integral sine. This function here is called the integrand. dx is the variable of integration. c is the constant of integration. And big F of x plus c is our antiderivative. Okay, so in the previous video we discussed all of these new integration formulas and we compared them to the corresponding differentiation formulas. In this video we want to focus on the integration formulas for the trigonometric functions as we see here. If you take a close look at these integration formulas and compare them to these differentiation formulas, hopefully they'll make sense. Remember, if you take the derivative of these antiderivatives we should end up with these integrands. And we will if we apply these differentiation formulas. Let's go ahead and try a few. We want to determine the indefinite integral of x cubed minus sine x. Well, to find the antiderivative of x cubed, we have to apply the power rule from the previous video. So we would add one to the exponent and then divide by four minus the antiderivative of sine x is equal to negative cosine x, and then plus c. So if we clean this up, this would be x to the fourth divided by four plus cosine x plus c. Notice we applied two different integration formulas. Both had a plus c, but there's no reason to put plus c twice because if we add two constants, we just get another constant so it's common practice just to put one plus c at the end of our antiderivative. Number two, we have the indefinite integral of two secant squared x plus cosine x. Well, this would equal two times the antiderivative of secant squared x, which is equal to tangent x plus c, plus the antiderivative of cosine x is equal to sine x plus c, and again, we just put our plus c on the end. Let's go ahead and take a look at two more that aren't quite so straightforward. Sometimes we have to manipulate the integrand in order to make it fit one of these integration formulas. So for example, on this problem, we need to eliminate the parentheses first, so we'll distribute the secant x. So we'll have the indefinite integral of secant x tangent x minus secant squared x all with respects to x. Okay, now if we take a look at our formulas, we do have two that fit. The antiderivative of secant x times tangent x is equal to secant x minus 
the antiderivative of secant squared x is equal to tangent x. And then of course we have the plus c. Okay, on this last example, again, we notice right away it doesn't fit one of our basic integration formulas, so we have to manipulate this. One thing that comes to mind on this problem, one minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x. So let's go ahead and try to replace one minus sine squared x with cosine squared x. Next, we could rewrite this as the indefinite integral of one over cosine x times sine x over cosine x. And you might ask, well, why would you want to do that? Well, again, the more familiar you become with these formulas, the more tricks you'll learn. But one over cosine x is equal to secant x, and sine x divided by cosine x is equal to tangent x. And now if you take a look at the formulas, we can go ahead and use this one again where we have the antiderivative of secant x tangent x is equal to secant x plus c. Okay, I hope you found these additional examples helpful. Thank you for watching.